Come in, boy. You live here, ship's doctor. I am Admiral. I'll go with you, Squire. So will Jim. And there'll be a credit to the undertaking. There is only one man I'm afraid of. Who's that? Name the dog, sir. You, sir. For you cannot hold your tongue. <laughs> In a few moments, we shall be bound for Treasure Island with Dr. Lipsy, Squire Trelawney, and Jim Hawkins. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. WABC, New York. Tonight, the Columbia Network is bringing you Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the air in Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. As Jim Hawkins was telling us, we are eager to leave the Venbow Inn behind and set out for the docks in Bristol. It was longer than the squire imagined ere we were ready for the sea. Weeks passed on then. One fine day there came a letter from the squire, from Bristol. Here yeah, lives it. The ship is more than fitted. It lies at anchor ready for sea. It was the crew that delayed me till the most remarkable stroke of fortune brought me the very man that I required. I was standing on the dock when by the merest accident I fell in talk with him. He had hobbled down there that morning with a parrot on his shoulder to get a smell of salt, he said. Out of pure pity, I engaged him on the spot to be ship's cook. Long John Silver, he is called, and has lost an egg. Well, sir, I thought I'd only found a cook, but it was a crew I'd discovered. Between Silver and myself, we got together in a few days a company of the toughest old sorts imaginable. I declare we could fight the frigate. See what ho! Hang the treasure! It's the glory of the sea that is stand by again! On the 16th of April, the schooner Hispaniola set sail from Bristol Harbor. It was more than 19 years ago, but I can remember it. As if it were yesterday. Me and my new blue cabin boys. Were Nineteen years ago. Leaning over the rail, waving goodbye to my mother. And doing my best not to cry. For at the last moment, it sort of hurt to leave her. And it was the first time I had been away from home. Then, a little before noon, Captain Smollett gave an order. The bosun sounded his pipe. And the crew began to man the captain bar. Soon, the anchor was short up. Soon it was hanging dripping at the bars. Soon the sail began to draw, and the land and shipping to slip by on either side. The Hispaniola had begun her voyage to the Isle of Treasure. On the second day out, I made the acquaintance of our one-legged ship cook, Long John Silver. Hey there, boy. Come in. Come on in to Long John Silver. To tell you the truth, at the very first mention of Long John Silver in the squire's letter, I had taken a fear in my mind that this might be the very one-legged sailor that I had watched for all those months at the Benbow Inn. But one look at him was enough. I had seen Captain Bones and Black Dog and Blind Pew, and I knew what a buccaneer looked like. Very different from this clean and pleasant-looking sea cook. His left leg was cut off close to the hip, and under the left shoulder he carried a crutch, which he managed wonderfully. Hopping about on it like a bird. Oh, this is a bait. This is a bait. This is a bait. Are you Mr. Silver, sir? Yes, me lad, such is me name to be sure. And you're Hawkins, eh? Nobody more welcome than yourself, me lad, in old John's galley. <laughs> Sit down, hear the news. Your first trip to sea, Hawkins? Yes, sir. Well, well. Well, there's a lot of things you're going to learn before this year voyage is over. What do you think, Hawkins? And if there's anything you want to know, Hawkins... You just come to old John Silver and ask him, see? He'll tell you. His galley was as clean as a new pin. The dishes hanging up burnished and his parrot in a cage in one corner. Yes, Captain Flint. I call my parrot Captain Flint. Yeah, the parrot, that's the famous buccaneer. Yes, Captain Flint, predicting success to our voyage. was not you, Captain? Uh, this is a <laughs> yeah, she's a powerful old bird, is Captain Flint. Two hundred years old, if she's a day. And if anybody's seen more wickedness, it must be the devil himself. She sailed with England. The great Captain England, the pirate. And on the old walrus. Flint's old ship. I've seen a muck with the red blood and 
fit to sink with gold. He's been at Madagascar and at Malibar and Suriname and Providence and Portobello. To look at her, you'd think she was a baby, Hawkins, but... You smell powder, haven't you, Captain? Yeah, stand by to go by. And blood, eh, Captain? Murder, mischief, <laughs> animal hands. Oh. And pieces of aid, eh, Captain? Pieces of aid, pieces of aid. At the end of the third week, we left Madeira behind us. The ship proved to be a good ship. The crew seemed to be capable seamen. There was only one man aboard who was not satisfied, and that was the ship's master, Captain Smollett. I'll speak plain. I don't like it. I don't like the crews. I don't like the men. I don't like me officers. That's short and sweet. But nobody paid much attention to him. Every man on board seemed well content. Double grog was served on the least excuse. There was duff on odd days, and always a barrel of apples standing broached in the waist for anyone to help himself that had a fancy. Never knew good come of it yet. Spoil folks' lands, make devils. That's my belief. We're not home again yet. But good did come of that apple barrel. It was about the last day of our outward voyage. Sometime that night, or at latest before noon of the morrow, we should sight the treasure island. Just after sundown, when all my work was over, I thought I should like an apple. I ran on deck. The watch was all wo- all forward looking out for the island. I got into the apple barrel. Suddenly, I heard voices on deck. Look here, barbecue. How long are we going to stand off and on like a blessed bamboo? Why, son, did I want to go into that cabin, I do. I want their pickles and wine in there. How long? By the powers, the last moment I can manage, and that's how long. How many tall ships, think you, have I seen laid aboard? And how many brisk lads drying in the sun at execution dock? And all for this same hurry, and hurry, and hurry. He's a first-rate seaman, Captain Smollett. Of the blessed ship for us. We're all seamen aboard here, I should think. All folks of lands, you mean. I know the sort you are. You're never happy till you're drunk. It's your long job. I don't know what this treasure is, do I? No more to use as you. And here's this squire and doctor with a map and such. Well, then I mean this squire and doctor shall find the treasure for us and help us to get it aboard by the powers. After that... After that... What do we do with them, John Silver, after that? Well, what would you think we does with them? Put them ashore like maroons? Or cut them down like that much pork? Duty is duty, mate. Wait. Wait is what I says. When the time comes, why? Let her rip. What's that? What's that? Treasure Island. Ten minutes later, we were gathered in the cabin. The squire, Dr. Livesey, the captain, and myself. Now, Hawkins, you have something to say. Speak up. I did as I was bid. I told them the whole story of Silver's conversation. When that was done, all three, one after another, and each with a bow, drank my good health. Then the squire rose. Captain Smollett, you were right and I was wrong. I own myself an ass. I await your orders, sir. Silver is a remarkable man. Here's the way I see it. We must go on because we can't turn back. And what I propose is that we don't wait for them to surprise us, but that we come to blows at our own time and when they least expect it. There must be some faithful lands left. Well, we must find out who they are. Jim Shear can help us more than anyone. The men are not shy with him, and Jim is a noticing lad. Hawkins, I put prodigious faith in you. In the meantime, talk as we please. There were only seven out of twenty-six on whom we knew we could rely. And of these seven, I was a boy. So that the grown men on our side were six to their nineteen. Next morning, there was not a breath of air moving, nor a sound, but that of the surf booming half a mile away along the beaches. A peculiar stagnant smell hung over the anchorage. 
The heat was sweltering, and the men grumbled fiercely over their work. Mutiny, it was plain, hung over us like a thundercloud. Around noon, Captain Smollett came up on deck. Hey, lads! We're not day and we're all trying not a sort. Quick turn ashore and let nobody. So you can take the gig. As many as please may go ashore for the afternoon. Hey! Suspected a trick. He hopped around the deck on his one leg. Wait a bit, man. What's the hurry? Wait a bit, will you, man? Soon the party was organized. Six fellows were to stay on board, and thirteen, including Silver, began to embark. Suddenly, I had a mad notion to go ashore, too. In a jiffy, I had slipped over the side and curled up in the foresheets of the nearest boat. No one took notice of me. The crews raced for the beach. No sooner had we touched shore than I leaped out and plunged into the nearest thicket. Behind me, I could hear John Silver's voice. Hey, Jim! Jim, my boy! Hey, Jim! 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 John Silver was quick at his work. Two faithful members of the crew were murdered on the island that afternoon. Only an hour after we landed... killing I saw with my own eyes. From where I lay hidden among the trees. Will you tell me you let yourself be led away with that kind of a mess of swamp? As soon as God sees me, I do lose my hand and turn to give me due. Mate, it's because I think it's gold dust of you. Gold dust. John Silver, you're mate of mine no more. If I die like a dog, I'll die in me duty. You've killed Alan, have you? Kill me too if you can. But I defy you. He started to walk away. Try this then. Long John whipped the crutch out of his armpit and sent it hurtling through the air. It struck him in the back and killed him. Then, Silver brought out a whistle. I didn't wait. I ran. I ran as I never ran before. up the side of a hill. <laughs> Far above me, I saw something leap behind the trunk of a tree. It seemed dark and shaggy. I turned and began to run. Suddenly, the thing appeared in front of me, and running forward, threw itself on its knees before me, and held out its clasped hands and supper. Oh! 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 you? I'm poor Ben John, I am. I haven't spoke with Christian these three years. Three years? Uh, Were you shipwrecked? No. No, mate, marooned. Three years, lived on ghosts since then, and berries and oysters. Mate, my heart is sore for Christian diet. You mightn't happen to have a piece of cheese about you now. No? Well, many's a night I've dreamed of cheese. Toasted, mostly. And woke up again, and here I was. What'd you call yourself, mate? Jim. Jim? Jim, Jim. Well, now, Jim, you wouldn't think. You wouldn't think I was rich to look at me, would you now? I know not in particular. Oh, well, but I am, Jim. I'm rich, rich, powerful rich. Oh, Jim, you'll bless your stars, you will. You were the first that found me. Suddenly his eye fell on the Hispaniola lying far below it. Between it and the land was the jelly boat with five men moving towards shore. But I could not tell if they were our men or the mutineers. Jim, tell me true. That ain't Flint's ship. It's not Flint's ship, and Flint is dead. There are some of Flint's hands aboard, worse luck to the rest of us. Not a man with one leg. Silver? Woo! If you were sent for long job, Woo! I'm as good as pork, I know it. I was in Flint's ship with John Silver when old Flint buried the treasure. He and six along, six strong seamen. They was ashore nigh on a week. And then one day, here comes Flint by himself in a little boat, and the six all dead. Dead and buried along with the treasure. How he done it, not a man of us could make out. I told him the purpose of our voyage and the predicament in which we now found ourselves. Oh, that long John, he's a bad one. And you're all in a clove hitch, ain't you? Well, you just put your trust in Ben Gunn. Ben Gunn's the man to help you. You tell that to your squire, Jim. Ben Gunn's the man, that's what you say. And Ben Gunn says you has ideas of his own. Ah! Look at that. 
Barbara Lois, we saw a Union Jack flutter.